Hey guys, um, I'm Jose and this is tutorial number 19 um, on recursion. Okay, so I think that recursion, and um, if we start talking about fractals, um, it's a very interesting subject, especially for scripting and programming, um, because it gives us uh, so many tools to actually solve problems and create beautiful um, algorithms as well. So it's going to be a few tutorials on this, I hope. Um, and we'll see, we'll start from the beginning, very simple, and we'll start uh, moving into more complexity, okay? Um, so let's let's do a simple setup, um, as usual. We're going to start from scratch, uh, no classes this time, uh, just to start with some of ideas of recursion, and as I said, fractals. If you're not familiar with what those are, um, Google them, do a little bit of research, and, and, and but we will see how to actually build them up, so... Uh, I'm hoping some uh, interest and research beforehand. Um, so we're gonna do a, as usual, avoid on a draw, or set up on a draw. Um, so six hundred, six hundred, and smooth. Uh, we're gonna bring in two libraries. Um, no, actually, just one of them because we will be working in um, in two D. Toxic.geom. Right, um, because we're gonna do a little bit of vector map. Um, again, very simple stuff, but like just um, as we have been moving more uh, using more vector math, I, I always try to keep. Uh, consistent kind of calculation, let's say midpoint or whatever kind of math calculation through vector math um, in order to get the information about the operations that we're doing. Um, some of these techniques you might find online, um, recursion techniques and fractal techniques that are based on push and pop matrix. Uh, that is some of the features of processing. If you're familiar with those functions, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do everything through vector math. Um, and I'll explain why when we finish, um, so we're gonna do a black background. Um, and well, this is kind of it in the setup that we're gonna build. Um, we're just gonna do one function that is gonna be called recursive circle. Okay, um, I'm calling there function already, so I'm going to say void, um, I'm going to copy his name, so this will be my recursive circle function, okay, uh, and this is, is everything that we're going to do, we're going to start filling the, the, the blanks here, um, what I want to do basically, it's one circle, first of all let's build a circle, but this circle would be done through I'm going to give two points that would be like the extremes of the circle and I'm going to calculate from those two points a midpoint and draw one circle. Okay, so let's do that and we'll then talk about what uh, this idea of recursion is. So, back 3 d v1, back 3 d v2. What we're saying here, as we have seen in other functions, is that the information is generic. We provide two points, wherever those are, and we will do some operation with those two points, okay? So what is the operation that we want to do with those two points? First of all, we're going to do a float called d, referring to distance, and it will be v one dot distance to v 2 okay? So we, we have the distance between them. Also, we're going to do a vector 3D, that is, we're going to, we're going to call it midpoint mp equals v1 dot add v2 right what I'm doing here is adding those two vectors um, and now I'm gonna uh, scale them by half of them so we're gonna get the average of those two points uh, that basically gives us the midpoint between them okay if you're not clear of what how that works go back to the idea of some of the tutorials on vector math where we kind of go deeper into vector addition and subtraction and everything 
Uh, but I can, you can trust me on this. If we do these two lines, we are basically picking the point, one of the points, adding the second one, and then dividing it by two, and we're getting the midpoint. Okay, so M D, M P, sorry, it's our midpoint. Um, so okay, we have the midpoint and we have the distance. So we could use uh, the function ellipse. A mode from processing that allows us to to say okay we're gonna draw an ellipse but from the center okay so we're changing the method of a, of, uh, of the method ellipse to specify that we're gonna provide a center point so if we do an ellipse now uh, we can use mp dot x comma mp dot y as our center point of the ellipse, and then the radius of this circle would be d, comma d, right? It would be a circle, so both x and y uh, would be exactly the same. Um, and that's kind of what we're gonna do. Um, we are, I, all, I will say, okay, no fill. Uh, I'm gonna specify the stroke, something white. Um, okay. So at this point, this, um, this function is totally functional. But we are so. We, but right now, when we call it, we need to provide those two vectors, right? So ma let's make two vectors. Three uh, D A would be a new vector um, that will be zero, comma. Um, I divided by two, so it's uh, in the middle of the screen, comma zero, because it's a vector 3D. I usually don't work too much with vector 2D, uh, even if I'm working in 2D. Um, so point B will be height, uh, height, right? So what are what are we specifying here? Um, we're specifying one point that it's in the middle of the screen uh, at the beginning of in X, but in the middle of the screen in the height, and on the other side of the screen in the height, uh, sorry, in the Y, and in the middle of the screen in the Y direction, right? So if we provide A comma B here, so those two vectors are kind of the, are giving the input for the function, right? We will see what we are drawing, right? Very straightforward. This is one of the vectors that we provide. This is the second vector that we provide. The function does calculate the midpoint and draws an ellipse on using the midpoint as a center, right? So that's a very simple function. Uh, and now we're going to make it recursive. Um, what is the idea of recursion? Recursion is, I'm going to do a little bit of space here in order to talk about this. What if we call this function? Let's say instead of calling, okay, we will call it first here once, but what if the function calls itself somewhere inside the function, right? Let's say, what if we call it here? The function will try to achieve all this bit of code and then will jump into itself. So it will start jumping inside itself. This would produce an eternal loop. So if we do this, the computer will crash. So don't, right? So we need to, if we do something like this, it's possible, but we need to suggest a way out. We need to tell the system, okay, you're going to start looping uh, infinitely, but there must be something that will stop you, that will say, okay, draw or finish this operation, right? So um, what we're going to do for that is add a little function, uh, a variable here called integer, integer iterations, right? So we will do all this stuff only if iterations is bigger than zero, right? We're going to say, do what you have to do, 
eventually jump into your into uh, the function again and again and again. But each time we do so, we're gonna remove from. Uh, let's say we will start with five iterations, we're going to bring it down to five, four, three, two, one, and zero, and this will stop because this won't happen if iterations is um, smaller or equals than zero. So let's, let's try it and let's see how it works, right? If you want to try and see how your computer crashes um, without um, or how you get an error just saying that you're trying too much recursion or something like that um, try it but I'm gonna do it the way uh, with this exit that is suggesting it that we will do it only through the iterations right so this is a recursive loop um, what we will put here is MD sorry MP so our point B1 and our MP point, right? So now, when we call the function again, we won't use the same points that we used at the beginning, but we would use our midpoint as the next as the as the points that we will use for calling this function again. So the next circle would be calculated with the midpoint, and so forth. Every iteration will happen like this, and we're going to say iterations minus one. So, what we're saying here is that jump into it yourself, like loop into 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 the fun, uh, into yourself, right? And um, use different information in this next loop with one less iteration. And when eventually you will reach a point where you don't, your iterations are smaller than zero or are equals zero, and you would stop doing that. So let's see what we are having right now. Um, sorry, we need to provide that the number of iterations. So we're gonna say something like six. And voila! Uh, what we have right now it's like the first circle is this one. It call itself again with this midpoint here. So we have that circle. The midpoint here. For that circle and so forth. And that that's the result of that. So you could say, well, we could use that twice, you know, like uh, we could use it with the other point. True. So we could say call this function again, this time with MP and with V2, right? So because we're cutting, if you imagine the the a line between v1 and v2 we're cutting it into two lines and each uh, and we're building a circle first with the first line and then eventually with each of the breaking lines that we have we do another circle and we do that and eventually like six iterations we're going to do that now seven iterations with both sides and this is basically a recursive function it's calling itself inside the function, so it produces a recursive loop where the information that we're generating, it's happening over and over and over again. This is the idea of self-similarity. In this case, it's obvious because it's a circle, but we're going to do a tutorial on the Koch curve um, where we will see how this kind of idea of fractal structure keeps repeating even in an infinite resolution and then eventually we're gonna see it um, with meshes and we're gonna look at a little bit of subdivision of meshes um, where this idea happens in a 3D structure as well so that's it